All right, somebody asked me to do uh, my five favorite anime movies. Uh, so I looked at my collection and picked out the five that I thought were my favorite, at least for now at the moment. You know, favorites change every now and then, but at this moment, these are my top five favorite anime movies. Uh, I haven't prepared a script for any of these, so I'm just gonna go off the top of my head with what I'm gonna say about them, because I love them so much. So here we go. All right, number five, Redline. Redline is just excess to the extreme, and the animation is incredible. If you have not seen Redline, I implore you to see it, if only for the painstakingly gorgeous, over-the-top animation. The movie is all about Flash. It's all about uh, just getting in your face, the most intense shit, um, and yet the world feels real and lived in, and the universe, while over the top, the characters still feel uh, grounded, and it, it has its own sort of uh, charm to the universe. Like, even though, like, you know, the details and the backgrounds and stuff, um, it, it doesn't feel like just slapped together. It feels like a rich tapestry of, of lived-in worlds. Plot-wise, sure, it's a little, you know, it's pretty much just wacky races, but space and death, but it's it's great. I mean, I, I it's so much pure fun to watch. When I sit down and watch this, it is just a just gorgeous eye candy, but just exhilarating adventure from start to finish. Uh, so, it's just a fucking treat. The characters are cool and sexy, the music is ridiculously good. It's Wacky Races the Anime movie, but fucking incredible. Uh, you, you gotta watch this shit, dog. Number four is... Tokyo Godfathers, uh, Satoshi Kon. Uh, I, uh, I love Satoshi Kon's movies. Uh, breaks my heart that he passed away. Um, but he is a master film director, and Tokyo Godfathers is such an... It's such a... Like, quirky, dysfunctional, like, almost like... Almost grimy. It's like a... It's like a... It's like a warm, really warm holiday comedy, but with some griminess that makes it feel real and, uh... Like, it doesn't pull its punches. Um, the characters, I love. The story follows these three main characters who are kind of like all have sort of messy lives. Uh, Gin, who is uh, like a homeless uh, alcoholic who sort of is estranged from his family. Um, Hana, who is a, a drag queen, and she's a wonderful character. And Miyuki, who is a high school student who runs away after a, a sort of a violent argument um, with, her, with her father. They all kind of find this baby on uh, Christmas Eve and they have to try to find the owner and as they're you know tr trying to make their way and through and get get to the find whoever this baby belongs to all these crazy hijinks and stuff happens and yet it all connects together in this beautiful way at the end uh, it's it's just a special special movie and I like that although the movie is very funny It does not shy away from like some dark some dark stuff going on like there are some dark themes explored and some criticisms of sort of uh, society it, it, it uh, What I love about you know, I do love Studio Ghibli and stuff like that But some of those movies are a little you know, they're some might argue are a little too clean too squeaky clean but uh, what I love about Satoshi Kon's work is um, a lot of this, a lot of it is uh, like a little darker and a little, like I said, grimier, but not in a bad way. It's just compelling. I, I love it. I adore this movie. Um, it's a great Christmas movie, so uh, you should check it out for watching around Christmas time. Uh, it's it's great. Number three, Kiki's Delivery Service, uh, Hayao Miyazaki movie. Um, I my favorite Miyazaki stuff or Ghibli stuff in general is the slice of life stuff, but I also do like tinge of the fantastical um, and Kiki feels like a very down-to-earth slice-of-life movie um, about this girl growing up um, and like her dealing with growing up and like how to mature um, but at the same time it has you know she's a witch she's a witch in training and she's you know doing all these things to become a better witch uh, and so it, it comes together in a really natural and beautiful way this sort of journey of her growth with the magic, but 
it's really kind of like a metaphor for her growing up as a as a as a person. And the characters are wonderful. Uh, Kiki herself is a great, just vibrant protagonist. Um, and it's I don't know, it's, some, it's just Totoro is also really good. Um, but Totoro for me is a joyful movie, but kind of lacks a little bit of the substance that I get from Kiki. I love that world she lives in. Um, you want to live there. It's like a cozy little town she lives in. Um, and you really just, I don't know, I just fall in love with it. All Everything about it. Continuing on that Miyazaki train, number two is Porco Rosso. Like I said about the sort of um, slice of life with the fantastical, um, here is a movie that takes place like during what World War One times um, with Porco. He's a, uh, a flying ace, but he's a pig. And he, he, uh, he used to be a man, but he got turned into a pig. He has like a love interest and a rival. It's like a very romantic sort of uh, love story to kind of like those classic, um, classic movies. Um, Miyazaki, you know, is very well known for loving planes. And there's a great plane sequence in this movie um, that you're like, man, Miyazaki just uh, had a little boner for this moment. But it's, a, it's like, again, it's a really warm movie that fe that is slice of lifey but has that like he's a pig so there's a little bit of you know a little bit of spark and fantasy there something like Howl's Moving Castle is fun I like that movie a lot but it's very cluttered like there's almost too much going on like like it's a beautiful movie and like uh you know watching it is like a treat but uh the story kind of gets a little messy and it kind of gets a little lost I think but with something like Porco and Kiki um, the characters feel really real uh, the their sort of emotions and their journeys feel uh, solid and straightforward and um, really developed Porco is just a great character uh, this is another one where just all the characters in it every character is a joy to watch I highly recommend people I don't think people are like, this is one of, I think, the lesser watched ones, like compared to, like, say, Howl's or Spirited Away. But I love Porco Rosso. Please watch it if you have not seen it. And finally, number one, my, I think this is probably my favorite of all time. Uh, it's tough between Porco Rosso and this, but right now it's, um, number one is Millennium Actress uh, by Satoshi Kon. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful movie. It follows this sort of, this actress's career from her, like, early beginnings all the way on and, like, um, sort of the journey her life took and, uh, sort of the parallels between her films and her life. It's hard to do it justice, but it is a emotional, just richly emotional, beautiful film. I probably cried, I don't remember, or teared up at least by the end. A celebration of this character's life. It's, and of course, because it's Soshi Kon, it's beautifully animated, and uh, like, like I said, it doesn't shy away from some like, you know, some dark themes here and there. Uh, it, it, it feels really real. That's what I love about Satoshi Kon's movies. Um, Especially some of the best ones, or my favorite ones at least, they feel really real. Doesn't sh doesn't shy away from the reality of the ugliness sometimes of the world, uh, and yet still manages to be a beautiful experience. And the way the story is presented, it like almost it like blends uh, between sort of the present reality because the framing of it is like these documentary documentary uh, filmmakers are uh, interviewing this older actress because um, she was like kind of, uh, I think she was missing, like she like went out of the spotlight or something. They find her and she's telling her the story, telling her, telling them the story of her life, uh, but they become in it, like in the in the movie they are in it, in the scenes and like, it's like seamlessly like going on, like they're going through her life as she's telling the story. I implore you, if of any of these movies, we'll watch Porco Rosso too. We'll watch all of them, but this one, if you can find this or watch it somewhere, Please watch it. It is my favorite Satoshi Kon movie. It is just a masterpiece. Like, this is a fucking masterpiece of a film. Alright, that was my top five uh, favorite anime movies. Watch this shit. Watch these. They're fucking great. Okay, bye.